Let's look at another example using partial fraction decomposition. So here I have the integral of x squared minus 5x plus 16 all over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. So I can see that this is a proper rational function um, that I'm trying to integrate. The numerator has degree 2, denominator has degree 3. So I want to write down what the um, form of this particular um, rational function is. So I have x squared minus 5x plus 16 all over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. Excuse me. I notice that I have a simple linear term and a repeated linear term. So this will be a over 2x plus 1 plus b over x minus 2 plus c over x minus 2 squared. Okay, um, And notice that I don't say that the integral is equal to this sum. Okay, The integral is actually going to be equal to the integral of this sum. So we want to be careful not putting an equal sign between what I have to start with and this um, initial work of going about finding what our a, b, and c are. So we know that once we have the form here, we want to clear the fractions. So I'm going to have x squared minus 5x plus 16 equals a times, now remember when I'm clearing the fractions, I'm multiplying this quantity here of the denominator on both sides. I don't write that, um, recopy that denominator to show what I'm doing um, every single time, but if it helps, you can do that. You can write down that you're doing 2x plus 1 um, times x minus 2 squared here. And then I have 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. Okay, so notice we get some cancellation when we do this. I take a over 2x plus 1 times this. The 2x plus 1's cancel. So I have a times x minus 2 squared. Do the same thing with my b over x minus 2. I'm going to have b times 2x plus 1, and then just one copy of x minus 2, because one of the x minus 2's cancels. And then I'll have c the x minus 2 squared cancel, so I'll have c times 2x plus 1. Okay, So we're going to use that second um, method of finding a, b, and c here, where I plug in convenient values. So I know that this is um, my equation here that's true for all x, so I'm going to go ahead and try to find my a, b, and c by plugging in some nice values. I'll start with plugging in 2, so plugging in x equals 2. And this is something I'm plugging in on both sides of the equation. So on the left-hand side, I'll have 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 16. On the right-hand side, this term with a times x minus 2 squared will be 0 when I plug in 2. The middle term will be 0 when I plug in 2. And then I'll have c times 5 when I do 2 times 2 plus 1. So we just got to do some arithmetic here. To simplify the, uh, the left-hand side, so I'm going to have 4 minus 10, that's negative 6, plus 16 is 10, so I have 10 equals 5c, or this is going to mean that c is equal to 2. So we have one of our values. Now what's another convenient value that I can plug in? Remember, when I'm thinking about convenient values, I'm trying to think about something that would make one of my terms over here be 0. So I think about doing um, negative 1 half here, because that'll make 2x plus 1 equal to 0. Okay. So notice that the left-hand side then is going to be negative 1 half squared minus 5 times negative 1 half plus 16. Okay. On the right-hand side, I'll have a times negative 1 half minus 2 squared. Notice that plugging in negative 1 half into this term with b and to the term with c will make each of those two terms be 0. So what does this give us? So we're going to have 1 fourth here plus 5 halves plus 16. Let's see, this will be a times negative 5 halves squared. So we're going to want to get a common denominator over here on the left hand side. So I can say that this is 1 fourth and 10 fourths or 11 fourths. 16 is 64 fourths, and on the right-hand side, I have 25 fourths A. Okay, so what is this going to give me here? So this should be 75 over 4 equals uh, 25 over 4 A. Let me actually just write that underneath as I scroll down a little bit. 
So we'll have 75 over 4 equals 25 over 4a. Okay, so now we can multiply 4 over 25 times both sides. So I see that a is going to be equal to 3. Okay, so now we try to think about a third convenient value. So because I do have repeated linear here, there are actually only two values that could make um, the terms actually be 0. So I just think about a third value. Um, That'll give me a, a simplified equation here, and I can plug in this a and c into that new equation I get and help me solve for b. Okay, so I just pick a third value because I have um, three unknowns here. I need to plug in three different values in order to um, solve for my unknown. So I'm going to just pick in, pick a nice um, small number that's easy to plug in, even though it won't make everything go to zero. I'll plug in x equals zero. Just simplify my arithmetic. So notice that the left-hand side here is then going to just be 16. And what am I going to have on the right-hand side? Well, I'll have a times negative 2 squared plus b times 1 times negative 2 plus c times 1. Okay, so this gives me 16 equals 4a minus 2b plus c. Okay, well, I already know c is 2 and a is 3. So I can plug those in. 16 equals 4 times 3 minus 2b plus 2. So let's see, this would give me 14 and then minus 12. So I would get 2 equals negative 2b. So this means my b is equal to negative 1. Okay, so we have our three values of a, b, and c. So we're ready now to write our integral as the integral of our partial fraction decomposition with those numbers plugged in. Okay, so remember I was trying to integrate um, x squared minus 5x plus 16 all over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared dx. Okay, and this was equal to the integral of a over 2x plus 1. Or remember our a is 3. So I have 3 over 2x plus 1. Then I had b over x minus 2. So I have negative 1 over x minus 2. And then I had c over x minus 2 squared. Well, remember our c oops, was up here a little bit. c was 2. So we'll have 2 over x minus 2 squared. Okay, and so now we're ready to integrate each of those different terms. So I just want to note something about our integration rules. So a lot of times in these um, partial fraction problems, you might have to integrate something like, like this first term, 3 over 2x plus 1, something over a linear type term. So just note that the integral of something of the form 1 over ax plus b Okay. With u substitution, you can show that that's equal to the log of ax plus b in absolute value divided by a plus c. Okay, so instead of going through and doing a u substitution on this, we can use this rule. So this is 3 times the log of 2x plus 1 divided by 2. Okay. Then I'm going to have minus the log of the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay, notice the coefficient of x is just 1, so it's like I'd be dividing by 1 there. And then I can think about you doing a u substitution on this, this other term as um, if I like, or I could come up with a, a rule about um, 1 over ax plus b to a power. But we'll go ahead and just do uh, u substitution on this last one just so we can see how that goes. So if I let u equal x minus 2, then du would be equal to dx. So I have these same terms as before. Let's see, I could just write this as 3 halves minus log of the absolute value of x minus 2. Then I'll have plus this integral of 2 times um, u, excuse me, 1 over u squared or u to the negative 2 du. So I'll go ahead and write our different pieces here. So notice that the um, antiderivative of our u to the negative 2 
will be u to the negative 1 over negative 1. And then we can go ahead and write our final answer all in terms of x. Okay, so we'll have our integral here that we were interested in, x squared minus 5x plus 16 all over 2x plus 1, x minus 2 squared dx will be equal to 3 halves log 2x plus 1 minus log x minus 2 plus um, negative 2 over u or over x minus 2 plus c. And this would be our final answer.